Dead by Daylight's most problematic killer has caused quite a stir lately. Of course, I'm speaking about Blight, who has recently been in contention due to several reasons. Firstly, the most damning reason was that while Billy's best add-ons, the Doom and Death engravings, were nerfed substantially while Blight's add-ons remained completely unchanged. Yeah, a killer who was already extremely difficult to master was receiving a nerf out of nowhere. But Blight, who is easily the second most powerful killer in the game, with a large amount of strong add-ons, was unaffected. The community's theory is that somewhere in an Excel sheet, most Billy mains would consistently run double engravings, therefore making Behavior believe they were overperforming. And this would line up with Blight as many of his add-ons are really good. Therefore, their usage and performance rate would be more evenly spread statistically. Secondly, a prominent Blight main known as Momo 7th was able to achieve an 1000 win streak on Blight. This is no hate to Momo. They're an incredible player, and their main goal was to highlight the lack of skill in the player base. In their own words. Of course, Momo's post did cause somewhat of a discussion on Twitter regarding the state of win streaks in Dead by Daylight and how they are affecting game balance. So I reached out to Momo and asked him about the streak, and uh, this is what he said. Uh, obviously, I was sweating my balls off. Right? I had like three slowdowns, agitation, double speed. So I had really strong perks, and I played in a very effective way, which was just basically trying to tunnel someone out as soon as possible. The entire goal was to just to kind of prove a point how strong a killer like Blight specifically can be, because Blight, I feel, takes a lot of mechanical skill and a lot of effort, but once you get that down, his chase is honestly just insane. That's what separates the S-tier killers from the lower tier killers, how fast they can get downs and how fast they can effectively tunnel. So honestly, he just has everything going for him, and with a couple slowdowns, it's pretty hard to lose, to be honest. I think it goes without saying that a thousand wins in a row should not be possible. Don't get me wrong, Blight takes a lot of skill to master, but his kit overall makes him a very problematic killer. And to fully understand why, we need to look at all of the changes made to him over the years. Blight was first introduced into Dead by Daylight on September 8th, 2020, as a part of the Descend Beyond chapter. Despite his fantastic art design and interesting power, he was hilariously underpowered. As many DBD veterans remember, his hitbox was terrible upon release, making any player constantly bounce off of tiny edges and and sometimes thin air. It also did not help that his camera POV was much lower to the ground compared to where it should have been based on his model, making him look really short. Of course, the community was not very pleased with this initial release, but Behavior did listen and slowly began to patch and fix Blight. In patch 4.2.0, Behavior fixed a variety of bugs and added a secondary collision detector to make hitboxes more consistent. They also increased Blight's initial dash speed from 6.9 to 9.2 meters per second. In patch 4.2.2, Blight became able to break pallets and walls during a lethal rush without the use of an add-on, similar to Demogorgon's change in patch 3.2.1. In patch 4.4.0, Blight's Adrenaline Vial add-on was buffed to regenerate rush tokens much faster, although the turn radius debuff that came along with the add-on made it not very worth it to run. The Soul Chemical add-on also received a new function in which a tremendously difficult skill check would trigger for a survivor once you enter a 16 meter tear radius of them during a rush. In patch 4.6.0, Behavior reworked Blight's collision again, making his power even more consistent and finally raised his camera's first person point of view. In patch 4.7.1, Behavior limited the max turn rate per frame for those with very high sensitivity input, essentially removing J flicking as an option. This was a very controversial tech for Blight mains as some people could get 180'd hit with the killer not even facing them. In patch 5.3.0, Blight's add-on Adrenaline Vial was re yet again to increase rush token recharge bonus from 0.75 seconds to 1 second, as well as increasing rushing speed by 10%. His add-on Summoning Stone was also increased in pallet blocking range to 16 seconds from 12 seconds and pallet blocking duration to 15 seconds from 6. This was an attempt to create an alternate playstyle than the usual bump logic when Blight's just run straight lines to down survivors. By increasing token recharge and speed, more novelty playstyles would be in play. Adrenaline Vial was given yet another buff in patch 5.5.0 where the turn rate penalty was decreased to negative 0.5 degrees per second from the original negative 0.8 degrees per second. The most recent change to Blight came in patch 6.7.0 where Blight's collision on trees on the red forest maps were fixed. And that's it. Shockingly, most of his add-ons remain unaffected, despite him being consistently buffed over time. It's easy to see these changes quickly made Blight an S-tier killer, and there's nothing wrong with having strong characters. Killer is meant to be the power rule after all. However, his add-ons are some of the most imbalanced in the game and desperately need a change. 
Alchemist Ring, for example, gives Blight the ability to instantly recharge all of his tokens after landing a successful lethal rush attack. That's the equivalent of Nurse regaining all her blinks after landing a blink attack. It's very, very powerful. Behavior also made good strides last year in rebalancing and reworking many perks and unfun aspects of Dead by Daylight. Hit and run killers were buffed, and most significantly, killer was made a lot easier. Base kit cooldown reductions applied to hitting survivors, and many slowdown perks becoming the meta. Killer was made a lot easier. Yet, Blight was not re-examined after these changes, and no attempts were made to proportionally nerf him or his add-ons. Now, while significant changes were made to Blight's collision and hitbox, it was still inconsistent on certain surfaces. Blight will often slide on a surface instead of bumping, and it can be very frustrating. Till players figured out how to utilize this sliding to their advantage. Thus, the birth of the hug tech. For those who don't know, the hug tech can be pulled off by standing close to a wall or object, looking down, rushing, and sliding on a surface to catch survivors off guard. A common example is catching someone at Killer Shack window by sliding from the door all the way around the walls to hit them once they vault. Behavior has said that they are planning on patching the hug tech, but to accomplish that, they have to fix the environmental hitboxes, which is probably not going to happen anytime soon as the initial post was made last year. After considering all of this, the question that remains is what should be done? The focus should primarily be on his add-ons. While many of his add-ons give a lot of value, the most problematic ones in question are Adrenaline Vial, Alchemist Ring, Iridescent Blight Tag, and Compound 33. Adrenaline Vial should have its changes reverted or at the very least toned down. For example, the increased rush movement speed could be removed so that their main appeal is that tokens regenerate faster. Or they could also reduce the amount of tokens that comes with Adrenaline Vial from 7 to 6 or something like that. Alchemist Ring should remove the ability to refill all tokens upon a successful lethal rush attack. Instead, it could add two tokens upon a successful attack or increase the token regeneration rate for a small amount of time. Iridescent Blight Tag should no longer have the exposed effect and rather should put survivors in the ment state upon the last lethal rush attack. Lastly, Compound 33 should be completely changed as it has way too many things going for it. Being able to hinder survivors by simply slamming into a wall nearby and instantly break pallets by rushing is too much in my opinion. I suggest either splitting both of these abilities into separate add-ons and toning them down, or remove Compound 33 entirely. There is an argument to be made regarding his speed add-ons, Blighted Rat and Blighted Crow, in which both increase the rush movement speed for each consecutive rush. And I think if they were to be toned down, I'd completely understand why. However, Blight should have some good add-ons, and I do not think these are as terribly unbalanced like the other ones I listed prior. Now, regarding his base kit power, while I don't believe it should be changed, they should fix his collisions on most maps. But I don't think they should remove the ability to hug tech, as it is simply another strategy that experienced Blight mains employ. Plus, shakes up the game a little bit. These are just my suggestions, and my opinion is definitely not the final word on this subject. I do have over 4,000 lethal rush hits with Blight, but there are definitely a lot more people with way more experience with this character than I do. So I've asked my buddy Lilith Omen, another cracked Blight main, what his thoughts and suggestions were on how to change Blight. So it's it's tricky because, I mean, ultimately the majority of the game's balance happens around uh, not the top 0.1%, right? Like the average player is not getting a thousand wins in a row. At the same time, it does highlight a problem because no one should ever really be getting a thousand wins. I mean, the biggest one is the add-on changes. I really, really like the concept of Blight's add-ons because unlike many of the killers in the games, it's not just like a stat change. It's not just, you know, kind of adding Mangled or Hemorrhage. Like it's 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 changing the fundamental way that you play him. I think part of the problem is that Blight is so strong base kit on his own, but kind of adding those those add-ons uh, in, in, in addition to what he's already capable of is kind of brutal. Compound 33 is probably be the most busted add-on in the game in my opinion but it breaks pallets quicker than billy or Bubba does you can regenerate tokens quicker than you're actually in fatigue for if you're on adrenaline vial in, in combination which is often the problem so i i would maybe suggest making it into more of a low pro so similar to billy so instead of having it break the pallet and then cause by blight to fatigue he runs through the pallet but the interesting part here is that he would actually the rush would become a non-lethal rush after he goes through it in reference to alkring i think alkring is the biggest one that most people mention i think what would be more interesting is if blight started with a penalty to regeneration so instead of taking 10 seconds for five rushes it's now 12.5 but every time you hit a lethal rush you are now taking that timer down so it'll go from 12.5 to 10 7 5 to to, and then ultimately zero, which is going to feel the same as the current Alkring. The main difference being is, is similar to Stabiffle, but way more brutal. If you start a lethal rush, but you don't hit someone, you lose all of those stacks. The Adrenaline Bar change, I would suggest to just be really simple. I don't think it should give you a speed increase. To be honest, I don't see why running double speed is slower than running Adrenaline Bar speed. Doesn't make sense to me. As far as base kit changes, it, it's hard to say, right? So like, I, I, 
I've, I've, I've seen a lot of people suggest the idea of Blight becoming a 110 killer, and I'm not against the concept of it. Fundamentally, if the power doesn't work because it's, it's out of your control, it's, it's a map problem, I don't think it's fair to really make him 110. If they were to, to fix the collision issues, I, I think 110 Blight would be fine, honestly. I, I agree with basically, like, with most of what you say, because, again, like, my opinion, my opinion is not going to be exactly like yours. Mm -hmm. Plus, also, like, I don't play Blight as much. I check the stats, and I have, like, 4,300 lethal rush hits, but mm -hmm. yep. I imagine you probably have, like, what, over 20k? I've got 156,000. 156,000. Jesus Christ. <laughs> that is, that is what do you think these are just my opinions and in no way the only way to rebalance blight so let me know in the comments below what you would change about blight or if you agree with any of my takes other than that i hope you enjoyed watching the video and i'll see you in the next one cheers